I had a problem when I was going to use my old shooting board to miter off the end of a 45 degree miter. What happened was I had used this old style shooting board that was designed after a uh, pattern by a famous woodworker where you put the board against it and run your plane across the top edge and that'll give you a 45 degree. Well that's fine if you're doing something that's a thinner board. Nice. It's fine if you're doing a thinner board that doesn't need the support up on the top, but when I put this board up along the shooting board, the top is a little bit higher and it tended to work the angled piece out a little bit. So as a result, my uh, trim piece that I'm trying to miter ended up getting a little bit cocked. And if you look at the profile on the end, you can see it's not actually quite squared off in here and it's got a slight angle to it. It's a little bit of a um, problem then to join up your miter and have it join really cleanly. That's the whole purpose of the shooting board. So decided I'd do some research and see how I could do a um, shooting board that will allow me to do a longer or wider board at that 45 degree angle and get a good clean cut. With the table saw unplugged, I've set my saw blade to the 45 degree angle and just tested that using a 45 degree square, bringing that up to the edge of the blade and ensuring that there's no air gap between the blade and my 45 degree angle. Now that I've cut the board on the table saw, I can use the square again to double check that that 45 degree angle is correct and precise. If it were off, I would see a little bit of an air gap between the board and the bevel. So I want all of my pieces to be the same length as my baseboard. So I've set the width stop by um, lining up my baseboard with the fence, setting the stop, and now I can cut the other pieces to the same width as my base. Just by putting in a couple of blocks like that, I can run this against that and it'll give me a good 45. Set my saw depth. These are just two three quarter inch pieces of um, board that are laminated together to give me a one and a half by one and a half inch square. And now I'll cut my 45 degree angle uh, fence off to length to be equal to my jig length. And then the other side I'll cut again at the 45 and make a matching piece to the fence. Before I screw and glue everything into place, this is the basic anatomy of my jig. I've got the three quarter inch base for rigidity, a three quarter inch 45 degree angle beveled piece that will go lined up with the one edge, 45 degree angled quarter inch plywood that'll just come up to the three quarter inch. That gives me a clearance for the outside of my uh, plane blade, so it'll be just shaving off just a little bit of that edge when I first start um, using the jig. Then I have one and a half inch risers by one and a half inch square again for support. One is a fence, the other is just supporting the other side. If I turn it around the other direction it's going to be for a left-handed person. And then on the top another 45 degree three-quarter inch plywood piece joining those together. Um, this will be screwed into place, and that's about all there is to it. As the plane goes across, it'll rest against this bottom edge on this edge of the sole, where there's no blade, 
and the top will rest against this board, leaving the blade part in the middle free to cut away at any width up to, it looks like about a 12 inch wide board. I don't think I'll be doing miters that are quite that wide, but it certainly should allow me to do my small board here. The final part was after I had everything glued together with the exception of this top piece was to ensure that I had this lined up properly. To do that, I took my plane, which currently doesn't have the blade in it, laid it against the 45 degree side and the 45 degree that I have on each end and brought this piece up until it was touching the plane. That'll be my support and then I just screwed it into place, clamped it and screwed it down. So now I have something that'll slide nice and even. Anytime you're going to use tools, you want to make sure that you're starting out with a good sharp blade. So I've sharpened my Veritas blade just doing the edge before I take it over to do my test. One of the things that I like about the way this jig is set up is that uh, it works well on the fest table or I could put a cleat on the bottom edge and use it as um, on my normal bench and just lock it into place. The advantage of using the fest table is that I can just put a couple of dogs in place that are going to hold, if I put it there, that'll hold the uh, force as I plane across and I can put a clamp in place to clamp down my work and keep it from sliding. That enables me to do something as small as this angled return on a piece that I'm working on. In order to get the angled return, simply lock this backer piece in place right at about the depth that I want this piece to be beveled off and when I put the plane against it it's going to have the force of taking it this direction that I'm planing as well as pushing it back against this block so I don't even have to clamp this piece into place the natural force is going to do that for me. So I have this piece of stock that I've put into my jig that I've mitered the corner by hand um, using a handsaw. You can see that it doesn't quite meet on this edge and it's just barely meeting here. It's a little bit proud here. So that's not exactly as straight as I need it. I need to bring this into square and get it planed off completely at the right 45 degrees. One of the things that I like about the way that my jig is set up is I can actually use two hands. Taking off just this little bit of a corner. You can see where it's taken a little bit of an angle there. You can see the saw mark or the uh, plane mark. I need to move that out a little bit further. And now I have just this corner to square up. And here it's all done. And I have all, everything smooth on the face here. Can get it just a minor adjustment. Let's see how it did. Beautiful square mitered corner. Everything matches up perfectly. Having used this jig a number of times, the one improvement that I would make to it is to add to it a 90 degree end grain jig on this end of it simply by extending the three quarter inch plywood out beyond the edge so that essentially if this were plywood coming out the edge this would give me my guide to lay my plane flat and then take it along the edge there i would just have to have um, an additional strip along the front um, that keeps it in line with this edge along the bottom and that would make everything perfectly square there. I think that would be a good way to have a versatile double purpose jig to do both 90 degrees and 45. It only took me about two hours to make that jig. I'd say it's a good success.